Now see here, application of elastic behavior of materials. First application is here, the thickness of metallic ropes used in the crane in order to lift a given load is decided from the knowledge of elastic limit and factor of safety. So, you might have seen crane, cranes are used to lift the heavy things, maybe the buses, trucks or any other things. So, the ropes of the cranes are made you know by using large number of thin wires which are braided together. And by this way you can increase the strength and flexibility of the rope. So, these ropes of the crane are made by using actually the elastic limit and the safety factor. It means the knowledge of this stress strain relationship for the material is very important. Now, see a second application of elastic behavior of materials. Here that is your designing of a bridge. See the bridges are designed in such a way that if there is heavy load or strong force is applied, these bridges do not bend, even do not break. What does it happen? For designing the bridges, beams are used. If the beams are used, suppose the beam is given like this, whose uh, parameters are like this is your length, breadth and depth of the beam. If W load is here hung, then the depression in the beam is given by delta is equal to W L cube upon 4 B D cube into Y, Y is Young's modulus. From the formula it is clear that depression here is inversely proportional to D cube. If you increase depth of the beam, depression will be very small. So, by increasing the depth, we can reduce the depression. But see here there is one disadvantage of this also. If you are increasing the uh, this depth to the large extent, beam may bend. So, to avoid this, I shape girders are used. These I shape girders has got large load bearing surface and they also do not bend. Now, see in this application, actually maximum height of mountain on earth can be determined from the elastic behavior of earth. See how it is. Now, see here at the base of mountain pressure is equal to h rho g. So, at the base of the mountain pressure is h rho g where h is the height of the mountain, rho is the density of the material in the mountain and g is acceleration due to gravity. So, density of the material in the mountain is given to you 3 into 10 raised to power 3 kg per meter cube. Now, see here pressure bearing capacity of rock. So, the rocks which are on the earth or you can say below the mountain, they have got pressure bearing capacity that is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 Newton per meter square. So, obviously pressure applied by the mountain should be less than this. So, h rho g should be less than equal to this, uh, less than 3 into 10 raised to power 8. Now, we know rho and g, rho is given to us that is 3 into 10 raised to power 3 kg meter per kg per meter cube. So, h should be less than 3 into 10 raised to power 8 upon rho g. Putting the value of rho and g, g we have taken approximately 10 meter per second square. So, 3 into 10 raised to power 8 divided by 3 into 10 raised to power 3 into 10. So, h should be less than this. Now, that is coming h should be less than 10 raised to power 4 meter. So, this is the actually approximate height of the Mount Everest.